Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Amanda. How are you today? Hello, I'm good, Francisco. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey. Today, we are going to make it simple. We are not going to ask where are you connecting from. We are going to, because today we are introducing this for startups and SaaS founders. Well, we are going to say, hey, put your LinkedIn URL on the comments and also the URL website of your startup or your SaaS. Okay. So we need to um, now uh, get ready. So we have one hour together. Let's do our best. We have lots to cover today. I'm ex really excited for, for this workshop. Uh, we are going to have today Amanda helping us with the building time. So she's uh, currently a community success manager at Better Mode. Uh, I am, uh, well, my, my headline is there. I'm head of growth. I'm you know, supporting all the marketing initiatives at Better Mode and also the community. And I'm going to see how can I share my screen. Maybe I can do it a bit more easy yeah, this way. Give me one second. Present. Present review. There you go. All right. Then, then we go to the present and we can share screen. All right. We know this one. All right. So this is what we have uh, for today. Now the, the the title of this workshop is Engage, Enhance, and Excel: The Better Mode Strategy for a Successful Customer Hub, Customer SaaS Hub. Uh, I want to start just like you know, uh, highlighting uh, a few ideas. We have an agenda for today. So well, we we did a bit of. I'm trying to see why. My texts are, are a bit messed up, but let me see. Maybe is this it? Give me one second. Here you go. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. But let's keep going. <clears throat> so we did already welcome intros. We are really happy to have everyone today. In case that you are going to see this as a replay or recording, don't worry. We are recording this session, so it will become a resource for all of you. We are going to learn today first. Why SaaS and startups uh, should build a customer hub? Then how the community feedback can be turned into product development? Also, how customer support through how to do customer support through peer to peer inside your customer hub, and also how the feedback that you can get inside the customer hub can drive adoption, retention, and how you can engage with your customers there. The final bit of this, this session is the uh, work, work, workshop time, building time with Amanda. So let's do it. <clears throat> um, this is the first step. You know, like I would say today we are going to learn three reasons why we want to consider you know, the, the effort, the investment into creating a customer hub for our SaaS. You know, one is how having a community and how to receive feedback from that community can really help with your product development. So to these days, we should consider community platforms as a direct tool for feedback, or a place where we can have a direct feedback loop to pass that to the product team. And then they can, of course, evaluate and decide what is the best to go, what is the best way to go. But uh, words are not funny, so I want to try again. <laughs> And let's see how this works, OK? So I'm going to go to my screen and share a bit of what we have. So we are kind of, there is a, a saying in English that we eat our own dog food, kind of. No? So we are, of course, running our own customers as have with better mode. It's our favorite better mode. Myself and Amanda, you probably know Jacob, that is also actively helping everyone there. And the first point was uh, how you know, uh, the, the community you know, and the feedback of the community can turn into a valuable assets for product managers, for SaaS founders that are trying to figure out, hey, what exactly is the feature set that we need? What are the next feature that we should get and release? Sometimes that is a challenge when, you know, let's say, a small startup team is trying to figure out by themselves. Instead, having a place, for instance, in our case, you can see we have this section named product on the left sidebar. We have a few sections, product updates, roadmap, 
change log and wish list. So what we have enabled uh, a space where anyone that is a customer can come and say, hey guys, I would love to have fireworks you know, on screen every time that a new member joins, okay? Uh, maybe it's not that easy to implement, but go you know, to the wish list section. In, in, our, in our case, we have labeled as wish list, but many other companies use a term simple as feature request. <clears throat> In our case, you know, anyone is enabled and empowered to share feedback, ideas. And it's not about just sharing your ideas. You no, know, what you can see here is, for instance, a few tabs like trending. You no, know? we are easily able to see what is hot regarding what or people need. And that is exciting, especially for people managing the product. You cannot imagine how happy Sohail, that is our chief product officer, of having you know, this right as part of our community. So he can be chasing, hey guys, this is the thing. This is the next step. Let's go, let's move on. Uh, and then even we can see in popular, well, our platform is very flexible. So you can see what is the recent things that people are asking for, uh, the trending like in the long run, what is kind of you know, a hot and then popular stuff as well. There are other ways, of course, to show what uh, you have. For instance, you might be able to also show your customers you know, and your community members what you have worked on in the past. So you have different stages. A, these are all the perks that we have delivered as features for the platform. And this is like covering the first step, like how you know, a SaaS should consider having a community, especially a community that has enough tools, like this section where you can actually get proper feedback from your people. Now, this is like a full post. People are able to share examples and resources. Even sometimes you might get feedback that is not kind of the kindest in the world but it's still valuable for your business. So now let me go back to my slides uh, because uh, the next step is, we are going to do this kind of dynamic. I will try to explain the idea and then go back to how we are doing it because that's the idea, you know, that show how we are doing it today. And then we are going to learn how to build all that uh, with um, a better mode. So let me go back to the slides. <clears throat> Perfect, so we did that bit. We just see it. Where is the... Oh, sorry, I'm trying to find my window, there you go. <clears throat> so now that you know that you can get the feedback from your people, the, the task, you now there is an action item for you as SaaS startup founder, a pro as product manager, um, as project management even, now, you need to find uh, a way to create this system where you can collect, analyze, and integrate you know, the top request and pass them through you know, your kind of Q uh, R and D team and decide exactly what are the next steps regarding all this valuable feedback that you are receiving from your community. So this is kind of the action item on this idea of having the community as part of the feedback loop. The second one is uh, simplifying the customer support. You know, like for instance. You might spend, imagine a few, you know, uh, let's say $30,000 every year just providing customer support for your SaaS, or maybe more. Now you probably have even calculated how much kind of get a ticket sold is costing you these days. So you know exactly, okay, so if I can save, you know, having a community where actual members can help each other, where my team can actually reply to five potential tickets at once or in five minutes, Probably that means every day I will be saving hundred dollars. That means the the support, the overall support cost will decrease exponentially. Now this is the big value of having a, a community as well, where other members and other customers can also help. In the end, you are going to realize, you no, know, as for instance we realized, Marta realized, with uh, our colleague Jacob. Jacob, that is today customer uh, customer support manager. He was a power user, a champion inside the community you know, of better mode. And after a few years, you know, like running their own projects and learning about the platform, he was helping everyone. He became a champion. And what ended up, he joined the team. You know, and today is you know, like a, a crucial member of the team, saving everyone. <laughs> so I would say this is a clear example of how having this community can you know, help you identify champions. And in the end, you know, the, the, the potential outcome is reduce the time that people are waiting to get their problems solved. And the second one is uh, uh, having uh, a way for them to uh, even realize 
how other people are using your platform. Now again, let's see how that works. <laughs> so stop screen. Now let's see how we are doing that in our better mode hub. Uh, this way, going back to our community. There you go. So <clears throat> for instance, we have a few sections uh, where we call them connect. And we have a section especially dedicated for people to ask anything. So we call them, uh, we call it ask the community. You can see that uh, there are a few elements that are important for this bit because uh, people probably will come back and keep helping your community members, but not for free, even though they are doing it already for free, but they want to feel that they are a certain point, a certain degree compensated or recognized. That's why you can see on the on the right sidebar of no, this space for discussions, we can see a leaderboard and you can see you know, like how, you know, for instance, Devin, Jennifer Surratt, Joe, Ellie, Steve, they have been part of our top members, active, asking for questions, helping others, interacting with you no know, community discussions. You can see even like the monthly ranking all the time or how it's going this week. And you can see because we are getting new members every day, then this graph, the weekly especially, is like different every week. And the main goal you can see is like, you no know, questions about the product, then our team, you know, sometimes, for instance, you can see I am coming back here to help Nicola sharing, hey, probably you want to share this and that. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes uh, also, for instance, you can see Jacob came in and help and so on. Now, even Amanda took the time to create a whole Loom video to help this customer you know, with one of the challenges. So this is like direct you know, benefits, like the support get enhanced and you can see the value and and, and the benefits for, for your customers. And then the final, uh, the final point regarding the benefits, where there are many, but I try to put together at least three to highlight today is, um, let me go back. <coughs> uh, is uh, this one, is driving adoption and retention through engagement. Let's translate this. No, so the, the, the main point here is that uh, you should use this customer hub also as an educational center for your community, for your customers. It's not about only like being interactive with posts. So sometimes your team are going to be sleeping, but you should enable enough resources for them to self-serve. No, in that case, you, would, you could have a knowledge base where people can actually search for certain keywords and get help, get assistance. Also, you could have, let's say, a collection of videos that are walkthroughs or dive deep on certain features or modules from your platform. Now, let's see how, how we are doing that. Again, uh -huh. <clears throat> again, Jacob, for instance, has been a, a, a champion uh, in the video side. No? So let me go back there. And for instance, you can see uh, we have a learn section and we have a knowledge base. Amanda has been leading the knowledge base for a long time. So you can see at the very beginning, of course, you need a search, you know, a search uh, feature that go through all the knowledge. Then uh, on this section, we have videos and guides. We have like kind of slider idea where people can actually go there and start seeing tutorials as about the specific settings of the platform and things like that. Going down, uh, we have created categories or getting started, billing, content management. And then sometimes people are looking for specific integrations. Now we have a ton of integrations and we have documentation for every one of them. And the same for maybe they are wondering, hey, I feel that I need uh, additional help. Maybe I need to reach a technical member to get assistance. Or maybe sometimes you have you have you are seeing your site down. You are wondering, is me <laughs> or is really down? No? So we have a status page here, access and things like that. No? So this is like how you could leverage uh, this educational side of things. Uh, using you know, a proper knowledge base and also an academy that is part of your whole customer hub. Now, the big advantage is, is in case of the better mode uh, system, is you can turn your knowledge base as a public resource, not necessarily for only customers. Actually, people that sometimes are exploring to get your software, they are looking and exploring your resources. They want to see if there are enough resources to learn this now to take control and, and leverage what I'm looking for. So yeah. on this case, <clears throat> the, the big advantage is you can decide which sections of you know, your customer hub are going to be public and which ones are going to be uh, private. And also uh, the other way that we deliver education is uh, through events. 
Now, for instance, you can see our past events happening. Uh, it's a long, it's a long list. Let me click show more. <laughs> now, so, for instance, the whole team has been working hard the last year and this year, bringing experts and, and interviewing them, learning from them. Even you can see, you know, the, the workshop that we did last month with Amanda about the job board. Then we did an interview with someone that has been creating stuff with Better Mode. Uh, this one is happening now. That's was well, why is in the past. But also what we are leveraging and that you might want to explore why if you are maybe considering open office hours for your customers. And also why you not consider orientation sessions for the new ones. Now, these are newcomers that are exploring is, is a good fit or not, all that. Well, in my case, I am the one helping this group of people every week. And Amanda is helping customers that are already with us for maybe a longer time. Uh, yeah, this is, I think, a good way to show exactly no, uh, this free leverage, and then how you can actually run them. No, mm -hmm. the big question today is how can I build all this? <laughs> now that's why we have Amanda with us, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Amanda, uh, I want to just uh, put yourself on spot. It's uh, building time, so. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Just give me one moment to pull this up here. Okay, can we see my screen? Uh, one second. Uh, just there you go. All yours. Okay, perfect. So um, thanks, Francisco, for um, the a lot of the insights there. And it's really great to actually see what a SaaS community looks like. It is like a common use case or like a SaaS hub. It's a very common use case with Better Mode customers. So what we've done today is we've pulled up one of our uh, community templates that are available to all customers. And this community template is called SASplex. So in this community template, we have um, things like a feed, we have a section for actual community for um, members to be able to talk to one another, to share their feedback, to talk to the team, and also engage in events and participate in groups. Then we also have resources, so similar to what Francisco showed earlier. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a few action items that we can take just coming off of this template. As soon as we add in this template here, there are a few changes that we can make to the community to really make it more um, useful to your use case here. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to start off with showing you how we can go over to the administration. As an admin, if we click on our profile picture and click on administration, we're actually taken to the back end of the platform. Now, what I want to do here is I want to first show you how we can adjust the colors. Um, so if we go into appearance in our administration here, this is where we can go in and just add in our own branding. And you'll be able to see a preview as to what the, uh, what the site would look like. So this is where we'd be able to add our logos. We have theming options. We can change the typography and also the styles of certain elements here. What we'll start off with is just going into themes. And then this is where you can go ahead and further customize what your site or project or community looks like. We have some pre-built themes here that you can start off with. And if you click on any of them, you'll be able to, again, get a little bit of a preview here. Okay, now if we go back, we also have the ability to offer dual themes. So we have the ability to choose something like a light mode and a dark mode theme for clients or for members. So I'm going to start off with just choosing one of these themes here. Um, let's choose something a little vibrant because I want my community or my site to really pop. So maybe we'll start off with some purple. And if we go back, we can click on this pencil icon beside this light one theme. If we click on the pencil icon, you can see that the theme comes with some preloaded uh, color sets. And you can feel free to go in and customize it further to how you see fit and add in your own branding. Now, when you click on any of these colors here, if we say, for example, something like this here, we can always drag and drop the color picker, or we can add in our own hex codes. What I'm going to do for now is I'm going to actually choose uh, an element where we can actually see 
the changes live. So let's say action primary. I really like this purple, but maybe I want to make it a little brighter, something like that. We can also see what the hovered element looks like if we hover over it. This looks a little bit too light for me, so I want to maybe just go in and add a little bit more of like a blue color to the hovered state. So this is how you can quickly adjust uh, any of your coloring in your themes. And if you go into Better Mode Hub, you'll be able to see one of the videos that Jacob has recorded for us for branding and styling a Better Mode site or project, community, whatever you like to call it. Um, that's where you'll be able to get a little bit more insight there. I won't go into all of the different styling options. I'll just change one element for now. And let's click Save Changes. Now that we've changed the colors of the community, the next thing that I want to do is maybe change a few other things. So for example, we have this hero banner that welcomes everyone to Sasplex. Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. Um, so what we can do is when you are on any sort of page or space in better mode, you can click on the keyboard shortcut and click on the letter C on your keyboard. And what that would do is it's going to open up the design studio for the space or the page that you are currently on. Now, what I want to do is I want to change what this hero banner looks like. So if I just click on this gear icon beside hero banner, this is where we can change the layout, something like that. And then if we scroll down, we can adjust the height of the hero banner if we want it to stand out a little bit more. And we can also change the artwork. So for example, I can always clear this, uh, click on this image here, and I can choose to either upload my own, or I can even use Unsplash, which is um, a free stock image provider. And we can go in and just kind of adjust whatever image that we want and add it in there. If we don't want a image, we can go in and add our own video. This will have to be uploaded. And then we can also just choose like a solid color if we choose. So just as an example, I can drag this down here and just choose like a full solid color for the hero banner. Uh, from here, what we can do is we can also change the text color. So just as an example, I want this to really stand out. So I want it to be bold and I want to have a bright color and white text so that it again really stands out here. If we open up the text drop down, this is where we can add a icon, we can add a eyebrow heading, we can change the text here, and we can also change the alignment. Lastly, what we can do is we can also add in some actions. Right now, we do not have any actions in the hero banner. But if you'd like, you can add that search banner that Francisco was mentioning earlier, or even a call to action that says maybe something like sign up or check out our website or check out our product, download our app, whatever it might be. But for now, I'm just going to choose none and I'm going to click on save changes. So this was the easy part. We were able to change a few of our styling elements just to change the appearance of the site here. Now, how can we make this more of a SaaS site or community rather than just using the standard template here? The first thing that I wanna do is I want to edit some of our spaces. Um, any of these links that you see on the side here, these are spaces or you can call them pages, for example, in the uh, Better Mode platform. And if I go into groups, I actually don't need sub communities per region or uh, country. So we can actually go in and delete some of these spaces here. What I'm going to do is I'll bring you back over to the administration. And I'm going to click on content and select spaces. What I want to do is I actually want to delete some of these spaces here. So I'm actually just going to hide a few of these so I can get a full view. Let's even just say member count. And then this is where we'll start to see those three dots so we can actually manage these spaces. Sometimes what you'll need to do, depending on how um, large your uh, screen size is or your 
the um, aspect ratio, sometimes you'll need to go in and hide some fields so that you can see the three dots. Or if you have a horizontal scroll on your mouse or you're using your laptop, you can always just scroll horizontally to see the three dots here. Now, I don't need this Australia space, so I'm going to click on the three dots, go into settings, and I'll click on danger zone. And this is where we would go to actually delete the space here. So I'll copy Australia and I'll paste it and click delete. And then now it's actually deleted from my spaces. So we can keep doing this for some of those country spaces that we don't need. Depending on your plan, you may have a, a capacity of how many spaces are available to you. So for the spaces that you don't need in these templates, you can always feel free and go ahead and trim down some of those spaces that are available. Uh, so the last one that I'll delete here is groups because this is where it's hosting some of those other spaces there. And once we delete those, let's just do one more for Germany. Once we delete those, we'll actually see the space disappear on the left sidebar. So let's go back into our community here. And you can see that groups space has actually disappeared. So that's how we can kind of trim down some of the spaces that are automatically loaded with the template, at least with the Sasplex template here. You can also see that there are some spaces that share the same collection name, but they're not grouped together under a collection. So this is what we would call a collection, which basically groups together spaces under a common theme or purpose. So if I go into my profile picture here and go back into the administration, let's just quickly review how we can go and manage some of our spaces and collections here. Now I'm going to click on the design studio and I'll go into collections and spaces. And you can see that there are quite a few resources spaces here. What I want to do is I actually want to move some of these um, to this resources uh, collection here. But since some of these ones are kind of um, named the same thing, I'll just say, let's edit this one so we can see which ones are, um, which, which collection is the one that we want to use. So I'll call this one product resources. And then from here, we can actually go in and change which collection these spaces belong to. So I'll click on the gear icon and when I select collection, I'm going to choose product resources and click update. And then when I go back, I can keep uh, adding in or reorganizing those spaces. And I can also remove any collections that I don't need. So if I click on remove, then we can do that because I don't have any spaces listed under that collection. So same thing with get started. Let's go in and move this to product resources. And we'll just do that a few more times. And click update. So these are um, very general, quick and easy tips that we can do with a starter template that is available to all of our customers. So I'm just going to go in and delete um, the rest of those collections that don't have any spaces to it. And you can see on the side now that the sidebar actually looks a little cleaner. Perfect, now let's go back to the community and get a full view. And now we just have those two collections here. Now the next thing that I want to do is show you how you can actually edit some of these spaces uh, to get a little bit more maybe value, to get to a better uh, user experience for your members. Depending on who your members are, maybe they prefer a different type of view, or it makes sense to have, for example, a roadmap that is not in list view, but in Kanban. So having them in different rows. Right now, the way that the template is designed is that we have tabs at the top here to actually filter out the view. So for example, right now with this uh, template, I want to see what is planned, what is in progress, and what has been delivered. You can click out of these tabs here so that we can um, so that we can just see all of the posts. But I'm going to click on the letter C on my keyboard again to open up the design studio for this space. Okay, now what I'll do next is I'm actually going to create a container. 
And containers basically help you organize where certain blocks, these are all blocks here, um, where certain blocks fall within the page. So if I click on container, I'm going to choose large just because this is a large space. It consists of three columns. Um, the entire platform here equals four columns, um, but we already have the sidebar, which occupies one. That's why this will equal three. Now I'm going to choose this to be in a horizontal grid view so that things can lay side by side next to each other rather than vertically where they're stacked on top. Once I go into this container here, I'm going to add three small containers and I want those to be vertical because I want them to go in a vertical fashion here. So we have one, we'll add another container, two, and another container, three. Now, a quick trick here is that we're actually able to copy blocks as well. So rather than having to recreate this roadmap post block, I can click on the three dots beside any block or even any container, and I can click on copy block. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to paste these blocks into a container block. So for example, this one here, I'm going to click on paste block, allow. I'm going to uh, move one of the roadmaps into one of our containers here, and then I'll paste one more into the third container. Oops, I think I clicked copy. There you go. Now what I want to do is I actually want to filter out these posts here so that rather than having these three filters or tabs or views, um, it actually shows only the ones that we have in a certain status that falls within a certain status bucket. So let's start off with this first block here and we can click on the gear icon to edit. And I'm going to call this one planned. And then we'll click on default here. And I'm going to hide the inline filters because I don't need these if I'm going to actually break up some of this content here. So I'll disable the inline filtering. And instead, what I want to do is I want to add a filter to the entire source here. So I'll click on add filter and I want the status to say is planned. Right now, we don't have any posts that are planned here. So it's just going to show no posts. If we go back, what we'll do is we'll also do the next one for in progress. For, um, for you to maybe better organize some of your blocks, you can always click on the three dots here and also rename them. For folks that are not as familiar with the design studio, sometimes it's good to label or rename some of the blocks so that you have a better sense of what this block is. So if I just click on renamed, I'll say this one is planned. But another tip is that if you hover over any block or element in the design studio, you'll see a highlight around that block. So it shows you which one you're actually trying to edit or um, adjust. Okay, so we have planned. Next one is I'm going to rename it and say, oops, in progress. And we'll click on the gear icon to edit that. We'll give it a title so we can see it at the top here. So it says in progress. Click on default. Again, we'll hide the inline filtering. We'll add a filter and say the status is in progress. We can also add another one as well to say if it's in progress, maybe it's also in beta as well. And then the last one here, we just go back once more, is we'll go in and rename this one again and say delivered. We'll edit that, give it a title, and then we'll edit this block here, turn off the filtering for inline filters, and then we'll add the filter to this source tab here to say that I want the status to show only delivered uh, posts or delivered feature requests. Now you can see that our roadmap is in something like a Kanban style. We can actually also change how these uh, posts look. So right now it's in list style. So if I go into in progress, because plan we don't have any right now, we can go in and change what the layout looks like. So rather than having it in a list view, because it 
kind of cuts off some of this information here, right? We can go in and change it to card view. And then if we click on fields just at the bottom here to open up more fields, we can then decide to show whichever fields might be valuable to the user. So I'll want the title. Um, I might want to show a bit of the post content here. We just go there. Uh, we can show truncated content and just show like a brief description of what this feature request is. Uh, we can reorganize or reorder some of these fields here. So I want the status to be at the very bottom. Okay, so now it's showing the title, a bit of the content for this feature request and the status at the very bottom here. And then we can just do that for the uh, other post blocks here. So let's just go back to layout. Again, we don't want list, we want card. And then we'll open up fields and showcase some of the different fields that might be valuable to the user. So I'm going to drag down status, go into post content. I want it to be truncated and I want it to be brief. And I need to mark it as visible so he can actually see it. <laughs> okay, so this is where we have our product roadmap now in Kanban style. So if we go back to the community, let's just get a full view. And there we have it. Now it is organized kind of in like a Kanban view. And then we can click on the post to get more information. Love it. All Looking right. good. Looking good, right? I like this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Now the next thing that I just want to showcase to you is how we can edit the help center space. I personally love designing help centers or knowledge bases. Um, it's just like a really great place for us to provide documentation and some resources to users so that they know how to get value out of the platform or your SaaS uh, software as a service. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on the letter C again. Again, this is just a keyboard shortcut. There are lots of ways that you can go and edit a space. This is just my favorite. So I'll just click on the letter C. And Francisco mentioned something earlier. With the knowledge base, it's very beneficial to have that search bar so that we can actually search within our knowledge base spaces. So I'm going to scroll down and I'll click on action here and I want to add search. With this search bar, we can change the placeholder so we can say search for an article. And then we can also change what folks are able to search for using this, uh, this search bar in this hero banner. So for example, I want to say, I want members to be able to search for posts and I want them to be able to search in specific spaces. So what this means is that I want our, my, my members to be able to search in here in our help center for any posts that live within any of our help center spaces. So what I'll do is I'm going to start grabbing some of those different uh, spaces here. So for example, getting started, desktop and mobile apps, uh, payment and billing, troubleshooting, integrations, and reports and data. Then what I'll do is I'll click Save Changes. And that's, again, just a really quick and easy um, adjustment that you can make in your community spaces. Now, if I go into Help Center here, let's just quickly look for a post, just so we know that it actually lives within one of these knowledge base or sorry, help center spaces. So let's just say apps. We wanna search for any posts that have the word apps in it. I'll just need to refresh so that the changes are live here. Perfect. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the keyword apps. And you can see that all of these posts here are only searching for posts within our help center spaces. This just really helps refine the search for users if they're looking to use the help center, just makes things a lot more easily searchable and accessible for them. Now, when I went into desktops and mobile apps, I saw that we have all of our posts in list view. In most cases, this can really work for your help center. If we click on the letter C for this space here, 
you can further adjust what this uh, space looks like. For example, if you don't want to have a space header, maybe we can add a hero banner again, just to kind of jazz up the space here. But in my post page, if I just click on default and open up fields again, we can actually show a little bit more if we wanted to, or we can change um, how these posts are displayed. So we have list view, we have gallery, uh, we have card view. And with card view, again, something like what we did with roadmap earlier is that we can actually showcase some content here. This might be a little too overwhelming for users. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it to list for now. Um, but just wanted to show you what other options you have when you're looking to maybe edit some of these spaces in the SASplex template. So I'll just click Save Changes here. But one thing that I do want to showcase to you is that if we go into the Design Studio, we can actually click on CMS Pages. And what I want to do is I want to edit what or how the Help Center article appears for users here. This is like a standard default view for any post. So what I'll do is I'll click on single post here. And we can actually take a look at some of the different uh, fields that are available. So we can maybe hide them or we can reorganize them. In this case, I'm fine with the uh, help article being displayed here. But what we can maybe do is we can add another container. And I'm just going to say large. Then what we can do, oops, sorry, that shouldn't have been. There you go. So I'm just going to add another one. Container, large, grid. Then we'll add another container. So I want a medium size one so that we have a section here for content. But I also want to add a right sidebar here so that folks are able to quickly navigate back to the other. Um, knowledge base or help center spaces. So we have medium for the content, and I'm just going to drop that in there so you can get a live view. And then in this large container, I'm going to click on the plus again because I want a small container for a quick sidebar. Now what we can do is we can click on the plus icon, and then we can maybe find a collection menu, Oh, looks like the Help Center is not in a collection menu, so we can just click Remove. Um, in that case, what we can do is we can have something like a link menu. So we can say Help Center, and then we can add the spaces for those different Help Center spaces. So um, let's say Getting Started. We can add another one. We can select the space here, um, Desktop and Mobile Apps. And then so on and so forth, we can keep adding more of those help center spaces. And then what you can also do here is right now you can see these silly emojis that aren't really related to uh, what we're trying to link to. So you can always click on the image to change it. And then you can upload the icons um, for those spaces, or you can use our icon library and just choose any icons here. Something like that may not be relevant either, <laughs> um, but just to kind of give you an example, um, that's where we'd be able to kind of adjust what this help center um, menu might look like. So I won't um, I won't take up all of the time to go through this, but just quickly changing some of the icons. So what this will actually do is that once we change what this post page looks like, just do this really quickly and click Save Changes. We'll go back into the Help Center. And then if I go into one of the Help Center spaces and click on one of the posts, now we'll be able to have a quick navigation menu that takes us back to the getting started space or the desktop and mobile apps, payments and billing, et cetera, so that members don't need to go back into Help Center and find the other category spaces for um, their Help Center there. That's a smart trick. I love it. Awesome. 
<laughs> so I think that's all I have for you for now for this demo. You folks can always feel free to jump into the orientation sessions and also the office hour events that Francisco mentioned earlier today. And if you ever have any questions as to how you can further customize some of your community spaces, feel free to drop into any of those events and we're more than happy to provide some uh, advice or best practices. Nice. Francisco, over to you again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, mostly uh, I just wanted to thank Amanda for no, uh, this amazing demo. Uh, your ideas are great for you know, how to show build layouts. So yeah, probably I'm sure everyone loves this. I wanted to quickly show uh, how um, better mode pricing works because we have you no know, new folks likely not all are like already customers so i wanted to show how we are uh, leveraging and helping people get getting started fast with all the templates that we have available we are releasing a few more this week so stay tuned but the interesting part is that you can get most of what uh, amanda showed on her demo uh, for a very reasonable fair price for your company. Uh, so uh, if you go yearly, for instance, you can even get started at $19. That is like really, like, I don't know the right word, but <laughs> incredible affordable for having you know, a, a place where you can get feedback, learn from your customers, engage with them, identify your champions, and all, all the perks that we learned you know, during the first bit of, of this uh, workshop. So I, I'm sure you might want to consider uh, better mode as uh, one of the options and of course uh, on this on the same website at the top you can see the community tab so if you click there you are more, most welcome to join us uh, in our customers community we call them the better mode hub but you are most welcome to join you can say hello sharing your intro and then if you need any help well i'll be there amanda will be there and the rest of the team even more ceo sometimes is helping clients in, in the other time zone so yeah I think that uh, that's it from our side. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I, I'm not able to see much um, questions in the chat, probably because the stream way that we are doing, but uh, feel free to you know, uh, reach out and ask any questions. Again, thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we got, I can see you know, lots of people live, so I'm really excited for what happened today. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone.